Hi, good evening. I wanted to share something with you. I'm excited about it, and I announced something at church this last Sunday that I think may have been startling to a few people, and so part of this video is to clarify it for our home folks and also to share it with you. Um, I've been really challenged by everything that's going on in the world, and um, in a way, this year, everything's kind of been turned upside down at the beginning of the year. There's a lot of things that we depend on in our society, from businesses to healthcare to education to government, uh, the banking system. You can go through the whole litany of areas and see how that, in some ways, all of those areas that we have depended on have been turned upside down. Now, at the end of last year, I felt like the Lord spoke to me, and uh, I was praying and asking the Lord, Lord, what will it take to really call people back to you, for people to really have a hunger for you again? And uh, I wasn't excited about the first part. I was excited about the second part. The first part that the Lord spoke to me was that uh, it would take great calamity, that things would be, have to be turned on in. The second half of that was that the people of that there would be had to be a demonstration of who God was through his people. So when this whole pandemic and all of the um, ramifications of that hit, um, immediately I was struck by the fact that Lord, we need a demonstration of who you are through your people. And I have, um, I think the first part of the year, we've had to go through a re-examination, a re-evaluation, an adjustment, and hopefully in the midst of all that difference that we have pressed in in our relationships with the Lord, and we have developed an identity in the Lord that then we can move forward with into our community and, and have an impact for the Lord. So bringing to the second half of the year, I really feel like God wants us to be on mission with doing the work that we've been called to do. I, I have been concerned about us just moving back into the regular structure of church, that nothing would change and we would just settle into the same groove, the same routine, and would not be actively involved in getting out there. It's kind of like the crisis had passed, we're moving back into a routine, and now we're just going to go about as the people of God, Sunday morning service, go home, go through our week, to go back to church on Sunday morning and hope I get blessed. I don't want to see that happen. So this Sunday, I think I shocked some, and some of them wondering what to do. But what I told them, I said, next week, we're not going to meet here for Sunday. We're not going to come into the sanctuary next Sunday. Instead, I want you to go out and, and take Jesus to the community. So in a sense, what I'd like to put a term on it, like a Jesus day, let's go and share Jesus with people. And I want to make that a little bit more practical, but let's going into God's Word, and a good foundation for this would be found in Acts chapter 4, where Peter and John were going into the temple, and here's this lame man outside of the temple that needed a miracle. And they said, look, silver and gold we don't have, but what we do have we'll, we'll share with you. We'll give to you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. And so they raised this man up off the ground. He, was, he went walking and leaping and praising God, the song used to say, and uh, celebrating what God had done in his life. And it caused a huge uproar because Jesus, Jesus, Jesus' power was demonstrated in the community. And... Uh, after that, it's interesting because there's some parallels to what I see that have been going on in our society, that the leaders became upset, not about the good deeds that were being done. They were okay as long as God's people were just being kind and doing good deeds to people. What really ticked them off and made them upset was the fact that Jesus' name was being exalted. They said, don't teach, don't preach, don't speak anymore in this name. But that's the very thing that we need to be doing. So... As we move into our community as this next Sunday, instead of meeting at our church, we go out into our communities, meet with our families, or whatever it is that the Holy Spirit places on your heart to do. As we do these things, let's definitely do it in the name of the Lord. Don't just say, be blessed, and pat someone on the back. Say, may Jesus bless you, and, and introduce Jesus and what he's done in your life into the conversation. Make Jesus' name a focal point. And whether you say Jesus or Yeshua or Jesus or Yesu or Jesu, depending on where you are in the world and what the language is spoken, where you are, make Jesus the focal point of our conversation and bring people in contact with Jesus. Look, the greatest word that you can share with some people is the testimony of what you've seen and what God's done in your life. So share it with people. 
I just put together a quick, a quick list of some of the things that, that, that God may guide you, some methods or means that God may guide you. But again, this is all about being a touch point for Jesus and bringing people to an opportunity to know Jesus and eventually, hopefully, to be able to make a decision for Jesus. And, and as you approach next Sunday um, and, and this very different day for a, a church in the body of Christ, I want to ask you to, to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give you guidance. God, what do you want me to do? And uh, uh, some of the things that I want us to really focus on is mending of broken relationship. If you've got family members, loved ones, people that are co-workers, friends, that you've got broken relationships, and you, the Holy Spirit points out to you that you need to get together with those people and restore those relationships, then do it. Do it. Don't let this free Sunday that, that God's giving you an opportunity to mend those relationships. Don't let it pass without working on that. It may be an opportunity to share your faith. Maybe the Lord will give you um, someone specifically or may show you someone that day to share your faith. Don't just do the little, uh, little trite response. Share Jesus with people. This may be the day of salvation. It may be the last opportunity they have. Look, and let me just clarify, God's not just called us to salvation. God's called us to a glorious life. So we're not just trying to get people free from, from hell. We're trying to get them into a position where they can live the life that they're created for. The next thing that God may place on your heart, another area. So I talked about mending relationships. I talked about sharing your faith. Another thing is God may put on your heart, and, and an overused term, but just an act of kindness, something where you know there's a need that you can fill that need, but don't just be kind and don't just get glorified for it. Glorify Jesus. Put Jesus in the middle of it. So if your interaction does not include the name of Jesus, it has failed. Let me make that clear. Jesus should be a part of the conversation. This is Jesus' day. So celebrate Jesus, share Jesus, okay? But here's some things that, so make sure you state the name of Jesus when you're talking to them. Tell them that you're doing it because of Jesus, that Jesus loves them. Share Jesus, okay? Uh, some of you may feel led to have family members or friends over for a meal, and you could have a conversation about Jesus, uh, let me just encourage you, don't just do the regular thing that you would normally do. Don't just get together with the same old people unless there's something different about it. This is a special day of dedication, a special day of service to the Lord. Um, do you know someone that has a need? Meet that need in Jesus' name. For some of you, it may be a meal. It may be getting together for coffee. It may be sharing ice cream. It could be a general conversation that you're having with someone when you're going out and about but introduce Jesus into it. You may include, here's some groups of people, your, your parents, do you need to restore relationships or have conversations with parents that don't know the Lord? How about your siblings, uh, your children, the next generation to be raised up to serve the Lord? What about extended family members that may not know him yet? Friends, your neighbors, co-workers, or even strangers that you may come across. Share Jesus. It's Jesus Day. There may be things, different kind of areas where they may have need. They may need yard work. They may need uh, have food needs. They may have, need meals provided. Uh, I'm trying to give you some gateways to have the conversation. Maybe they need their laundry done or they need mechanic work done or uh, what skill do you have to offer that you could help somebody with? Maybe you know how to repair things and they don't know how to repair it or, or physically aren't able to do it because of something that they're going through. It may be that you need to babysit for somebody. Go in there and give them a break. Take care of their kids. But make sure that it's not just an act of kindness, but Jesus. Anybody can do an act of kindness, but put Jesus in the middle of it. Um, maybe you can give them a plant or a flower or some unusual, unexpected something that will catch their attention. Um, uh, you know, go to your neighborhood and give out bags of fruit or give something to your neighbors or people around you and, and tell them you're doing it because Jesus loves them and you just wanted to express that love. You can give them a plant and let it grow in order to be a sustained something that they look at every day and think about Jesus' love for them. Look, make sure on Jesus' day that Jesus is the focus. I want to get this word out to all of our church people. I want to share it 
and hopefully it'll go out on, on Facebook so it can be shared. But do this in your church. Do it in your community. Do it as individuals. But share Jesus. It is vitally important. Here we are, the second half of 2020 already, and we've had all this disruption in the first half of the year. Let's bring it back to the right kind of focus for the last half of the year. Let Jesus be glorified. Let his name be lifted up. Live the life that he's called us to live. Um, and for some of you, even in our church, God may speak to you and tell you to visit another church. Look, if you want to visit another church, that's fine. I want you to learn some really good things. If God puts it on your heart, it's intentional. Learn some good things and bring it back home. Let's grow. We'll grow together. May the Lord bless you and make you effective. Lord, you hear what our intention is. God, may you manifest the power of your kingdom through the lives of your people. Let Jesus' name be glorified. And we, we do pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed and go be a blessing.